Welcome to what will be the very first edition of Hands On. So when I was deciding which of the new colour e-ink devices to purchase, I narrowed it down to the Pocketbook colour and the Poke 2 colour, but I was unable to find anywhere on the internet a direct comparison between the two devices. So I did the only sensible thing, which was to buy them both and make my own comparison review. So Colour e-ink has been around for about 10 years, I think. It starts off with the first version, which was e-ink Triton. And this is the second edition of the e Colour e-ink, which is e-ink Kaleido, also known as Print Colour. They call it Print Colour because they've got this colour filter array, which is just printed. They've printed the array and then they've put it on top of the white and black colour, the, the white and black screen. So the way the technology works is that you have this inactive layer with colours on it and to change what colour is displayed you black out one of the three colours to one of I think 16 degrees is, is what uh, e-ink does at the moment. So 16 shades and anyway it ends up being 4096 colours I believe is, uh, is what the documentation says. The problem of course is that by having this array over the top, this colour filter, you're blocking out a lot of the white. So you end up with a screen that is, I would say, 30% darker than a standard e-ink screen. So let me just show you. Here is my Kindle, I believe it's a fifth generation uh, paper white. So as you can see, it's quite a bit lighter than the grey that you can see on this Poke 2 and on the Pocketbook colour. That being said, if you compare it to older e-ink devices, like this Kobo, then the difference isn't as huge. The, these older devices with lower quality earlier editions of e-ink have more of a grey screen. And I can show you this as well. This is a fourth generation Kindle. And it's still brighter than the the Poke 2, but it's it's a much grayer screen compared to the modern e-readers. So as much as it is quite annoying that colour e-ink is a lot darker, it's not as bad as it sounds. Um, one problem I have with this is I'm just unable to work out what what qualities this this new Kaleido technology has over the previous Triton. Um, the Triton had sort of square pixels and then rectangular pixels. There were two, two editions of that. Um, and this one has sort of, people have described it as hexagonal pixels, but that's not entirely correct. It's offset square pixels. So I've actually drawn a diagram, not very good, but here is the diagram that I've drawn sort of show how the pixels are arranged. So as I said, it's an offset uh, rectangular or square pixel. And this leads to sort of a very strange sort of pattern appearing when you when you open up a um, an image where you have sort of this diagonal um, streaks through your image. And as much as this is a this is annoying at first and a bit weird. I kind of got used to it, kind of got a little bit used to it, and it's now part of the charm of the device. It's just, you know, the way the technology is. The same way that we, for example, like pixel art. So both of these come with a glow light, and the glow light on the Onyx is ever so slightly brighter. That being said, I sort of have the feeling, but I can't really confirm it, but I sort of have the feeling that this one, the pocketbook, has a slightly whiter, ever so slightly whiter glow light. So generally, if you're not outside in the bright sunlight or inside under a very bright light, you're going to want to have the glow light on just about at all times. It looks quite bright on the camera now. This is showing it brighter than it actually is in real life. It actually looks quite muted and grey, and people have described the colours on these devices as being quite um, washed out, but I think washed out is the wrong term. Washed out would imply that they were bright 
and that they were being washed out by the brightness of the uh, image. Whereas this is sort of the opposite, it's muted, they're being kind of greyed out. Um, the image quality on these two, two devices is the same, it's the same screen. I sometimes notice that one of the screens looks better than the other with certain images and I'm not really sure why and it seems to change. For example, here we've got an ebook. Uh, you can see here there's a sort of a staining here, um, but a lot of people have complained about that, but that's just to do with the settings. So the settings on this you set when it refreshes on the Onyx book. You should go in here, click on the refresh settings, set it to refresh every page and you're good. Then it will be the same quality as the screen here. So. I don't know if you can see, but it does sort of look like this is slightly whiter, the pocketbook, than the Onyx. But I'm not sure it makes a huge difference, to be honest. It's so slight, and I'm not even sure it's there. could just be that I can't get the brightness settings completely equivalent on both devices. So as you can see, they're in terms of uh, how the screen looks, it's, it is the same basically. There are a few differences that I'm going to go into. Um, I prefer sort of the default font on this one, but you can change the font on this one to match it, so that's fine. This one, the pocketbook, has a uh, page readout at the bottom, whereas to get it on the Onyx you have to click on here and then you see it down there, which I find a little bit annoying, but um, there you go. Um, so comparing the two, the uh, Onyx has a much faster processor. It has more RAM and it has uh, an octa-core processor compared to, I think this is dual-core or single-core on the pocketbook with one gigabyte of RAM, possibly two. You'll have to check that up. But anyway, this blows out of the water in terms of speed. Um, turning the page here, it's ever so slightly faster. I wouldn't say that makes a huge difference with a book like this. But when you're looking at PDFs, then it is a massive difference. Ah, that's another um, thing about these two devices. The uh, books has no buttons whatsoever, apart from the, the power button. And this can be a little bit frustrating at times, uh, but you do sort of get used to it. The way that books has the operating system is you have this nav ball, which appears on every page. You can disable it, but it's not not really worth it, you should keep it on so that you can navigate properly. So navigating is a little bit more difficult. Now, let's uh, let's open up a comic, let's go to the library here. Um, even in the library this is much slower, the, um, the pocketbook. Now, here we go. So here's a free comic, let's open that one. And yeah, they, they both have very similar colours. Um, I've actually adjusted the contrast on the... on the uh, Onyx books, so let me just uh, change the contrast. Okay, it's not there. Where is it? Uh, format. Contrast, here we go. So, image contrast, text contrast. So, Let's go to the same page, and yeah, strangely, it appears a little bit brighter on here, but it's not necessarily, hmm, no, 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 that's wrong. So the pocketbook does have somehow slightly clearer colours, and I think it might have to do with the glow light here, so it, it baffles me why there's no warm lights on these devices, especially with the books, because their other poke range um, devices have glow lights that uh, you know you can change between warm lights and cold light so it's sort of baffling why it wouldn't have that um, I find the best way to read the comics on these is to turn it sideways uh, so that you can you can have a bigger image of course it's not the best reading comics on a six inch screen but that is at the moment the best we've got now I'm looking at these images again, and you can see here, so on his nose here, and on his eyebrow, it strangely seems brighter on here, but at the same time, the colours on this panel seem a lot brighter on the books, so they must clearly be using the technology in different ways, ever so slightly. Um, and that, that gives you different results on the quality. I'll be honest, 
I think I prefer the pocketbook. That being said, there are so many um, good things about the books that it definitely overcomes it. First of all, this is running Android. Well, this is running uh, its own custom Linux, I believe. So you can download any apps you want on this from the App Store. You can, if you don't like this e this uh, reader here, you can change it for another one. Uh, it's a pretty good and powerful reader. It's Neo Reader, it's called. It's the default one that comes with it. But uh, it's not the best for navigation. You can pinch and zoom, but then when you want to move about, you can't just scroll like you would in a normal app. So yeah, they are pretty comparable, um, but the technology is not perfect. I don't know if I would say wait for um, later devices because I don't think that uh, Color E-Ink can get so much better. I think it's just a limitation of the technology that the Color E-Ink will always be darker. All right. Um, Another thing is PDFs. So PDFs work very well on the books because of its fast processor. I really wanted you to, to show a comparison between the pocketbook and the um, books, but I can't. Quite simply, it does not load PDFs at all. It, some of them work on the pocketbook, but um, I have great difficulty loading PDFs and very often it crashes. On this, however, it's it's brilliant. And although, again, the six inch screen isn't great, the fact that it has such a fast processor sort of makes this uh, not really relevant because you can scroll and pinch and zoom to any part of the PDF you want to read it. Um, ah, so uh, let me talk about the speeds as well. This one, the pocketbook, has one speed. On the other hand, you have here with the books three options for speed. There was a fourth option, which is called X mode, which makes it into a black and white e-reader, but it's incredibly fast, lightning fast. You can even watch videos on e-ink with it. The, um, the thing is though, they've taken that out without really telling anyone. I uh, did contact them and they just told me that they've taken it out and it's not coming back, which is incredibly annoying. I think that's terrible, terrible customer service. If you're just gonna remove features without the consent of the device owners and then not tell them about it. But anyway, so different speed modes. The clearest one is obviously normal mode, but you can go all the way up to A2 mode. And A2 mode is brilliant, it's super fast, but it degrades the quality of the image. Okay, now it's not wanting to do it at all. Right, there we go. There we go. So yeah, the A2 mode is lightning fast. Um, so again, uh, this is another area where the uh, the books just sort of is capable and the pocketbook just isn't. So it has a browser on the pocketbook, but it's not very good. It uh, often doesn't load pages properly, sometimes not at all. I've tried going on Facebook with it, for example, and it just leads to a black screen. Uh, on the other hand, the books is absolutely brilliant. Again, you can see some sort of staining and everything here, but that's just because we're on A2 mode. If I wanted a clearer image, I'd just go here, click to normal, and then the scrolling is a little bit more jagged, but um, it's much, much clearer to read. It is a bit strange though. I feel like the, the browser has a darker white than, than other apps, but maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just a little bit... Um, comparing it to a normal phone. But you can sort of see it here as well. I really feel like the pocketbook is a little bit whiter with the with the front light than this one, which is sort of a blue light on the books, which is quite annoying. But again, it's just, it, it's a small uh, problem compared to all the other things that the books does right. The pocketbook, I'm not gonna bother showing you the browser because it's, uh, hit and miss whether it works. Another thing is it doesn't do multitasking very well, or at all. When you close the browser, it just resets. It, you don't have your page anymore. Whereas this one, if you open the, the browser up again, it's still on the page that you were on. Also, if you don't like the browser, get Chrome. You can just download any, any app you want from the App Store. Even video apps, you can even watch YouTube videos. 
The one problem is neither of these devices has a speaker, which is annoying. Um, I really wanted to use one of these as sort of a an all-round device to so that I'm not constantly looking at screens, you know, LCD or LED screens. But um, yeah, the lack of a of a speaker is a bit annoying, but you can use the Bluetooth to attach a Bluetooth speaker or headphones. Um, headphones, speaking about headphones, reminds me of the ports. So the books has USB-C, whereas the um, pocketbook only has micro USB. This isn't something that bothers me, but it bothers a lot of people for reasons I don't understand. Um, also, the pocketbook takes an SD card, whereas the books doesn't it doesn't take an SD card which is a little bit annoying but it has 32 gigabytes of RAM uh, sorry of uh, ROM of uh, memory and um, storage storage is what people call it um, yeah I've never understood that it's, it's called ROM and RAM not storage and memory that those those terms are very ambiguous and make no sense anyway so 32 gigabytes 32 gigabytes of storage which is enough for, for ebooks, but if you're going to read comics on it, which is sort of the reason why people get colour e ink in the first place, then um, it'll fill up quite quickly. So I'm, I haven't run out of space yet, but I'm deleting things when I've read them so that I don't don't run out of space, which is a little bit annoying, but it's uh, it's still good. It's still a great device. So um, I'm not finished yet with the comparison, but. I just want to say I really recommend the the books over the pocket book. The price, its uh, retail value is a hundred euros or dollars more than the pocket book, and availability is not so great. They weren't planning on making a big release for this, so there's not that many of them out there, and most companies are sold out already. And I don't believe they're planning on making new ones. But I have found on eBay there's two sellers, one in the UK and one in Australia, who are actually selling these for a lot cheaper, a little over $200, which brings it in line with the pocketbook. So it, it's not really a, a price problem either at the moment. I'm not sure how they get such low prices, but it's there. So yeah, I would go for the Onyx. I'm going to keep the Onyx, uh, Onyx books and I am going to get rid of the pocketbook because it's rubbish. It's uh, the thing is because of the the color e ink, it's uh, it's darker. So using this as just an ebook reader is kind of uh, defeating the point. You may as well just use a black and white ebook reader. And if you want to read comics on it, sometimes it works, but larger files just crash it. And if they're PDF comics, then you've got no chance. You won't be able to open it, or it'll be incredibly slow. So this device just isn't made to do its actual job. It's it's uh, so limited and it's just not got enough power to do all the things that you want to do and it hasn't got any of the apps because it's not Android. Um, oh, let's see, I've, uh, I've got a list here of other things I wanted to mention. But no, I think that's actually it. Yeah, we're done. Okay, get the... Uh, Get the Onyx, don't get the pocketbook, and uh, have a good day. Wait, wait, before you go, don't worry, I've uh, forgotten something. So, this is a little diagram I drew. Uh, so because of the diagonal pixels, the sort of offset colored pixels, what you end up getting is every time you get a straight line going down, um, obviously the colors are gonna be jagged like this and the books has much better anti-aliasing. It likes to fill these in with, with black, whereas the pocketbook sort of either leaves them white or it tries to do color, but then you only got half a pixel there so the color is wrong. And you often see these little gaps and it just looks really bad. So again, in this regard, the books is much better, but this is a software issue and the pocketbook could easily correct it with a with a firmware update so maybe they'll fix it maybe they won't goodbye so I actually noticed something after finishing this video which is probably quite important uh, on the pocketbook you can go into the settings and then there are all these options to adjust gamma brightness contrast and saturation which is really important
So you can move the saturation down to here, or up to here, or here. You can go for a completely black and white image if you want. But that's something that the Onyx books is completely missing. And hopefully you can see the huge difference here. Compared to, to the Onyx books, this is so much brighter, or at least has much higher saturation. And the Onyx books looks almost grey in comparison, and it seems seems strange that they wouldn't have any saturation options in the Onyx books. The only options for the books is contrast, which affects the colour a little bit, but it's not the same as all the options that you get on the pocketbook. So if you're just going to read comics in CBR format, then maybe you should get the pocketbook, because you can adjust the colours to make it so much more vibrant. And yet the Onyx Books doesn't have this option despite having a much better operating system. So hopefully that is the last thing I have to say on this, because I don't want to turn this camera on again.